The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts, acceptable in O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Yesterday, I braved the pollen in the air and came over to Daddy Craw and enjoyed that. It's always a wonderful time. The children bounce in bouncy houses. Uh, everybody eats high caloric food. It's a good time. The band was playing. Reminded me of, of a, a song by one of my favorite singer songwriters, the troubadour of the Gulf Coast, Jim Buffett, his own self. One of Buffett's songs begins I bought a watch from a grand floating down canal. It doesn't use numbers or moving hands, it always just says now. <laughs> now, you may be thinking that I was had, but this watch is never. And if I have trouble, the warranties breathe, breathe out, move on. <laughs> and that is just what Jesus did on the first day of the week. It is just what he offered the disciples that day, the next Easter, and what he, or the next Sunday, and what he offered us. Everything that empire could do to Jesus had been done and had failed. His resurrection shows that death loses, terror ends. Oppression is broken. The resurrection shows that love wins. Life wins. God wins. And we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit from the God who breathe in the gift of the Spirit, breathe out the gospel news, and move on to new resurrection living. We leave that would and ruin the dirt behind us. It was the first day of the week, wrote the author, gospel. It was the evening of that day. Ten at least of the disciples were in the room. Thomas, not there. that's one of the plot. Judas, we assume, was not there because, well, Judas. Possibly it was just Possibly they had already begun to edit those strong, faithful women out of the story, but that's another matter for another day. The disciples had been there Friday. The day in the story Sunday, it's Easter, it's a new day. And Easter is the day. As the first leaders of this movement have told us and given us their word from 2,000 years ago, Easter is the eighth day of creation. Beyond the creation accounts in Genesis, Easter ushers in a new life, a new creation. And we, each and every one of us as Easter people, are new creations in Easter life. Resurrection is such a creative act by God, such a cosmos shifting universe restructuring that it ushers an entirely new creation with an entirely new story. It's different, and that's okay. Nothing lasts forever. Breathe in. Breathe out, move on. Science is clear that nothing lasts forever. Since the beginning of the atomic age, experiment experiment indicated clearly that up to 98% of the atoms that make up your body are replaced each year. Geologists can prove that no landscape is permanent. Water, fog, steam, ice, they remain the same, but at different stages and different temperatures is the only constant that we've got. In resurrection, as one Christian leader has re written recently, a particularly positive change. We tend to see so only in the long run. In the short run, change can too often look like death. Sports dynasties come to end. Romance ends. Lives end. In the short run, change can look like death. Pastors will often tell only grieving the death of a loved one that their life is not ended, it is transformed, it is changed into the life that is to come. God, though, could not wait for modern science to give history hope. It was enough to believe that Jesus was raised from the dead, planting the hope and the of the resurrection in our very DNA. Incarnate, his passing over into the resurrection into the ongoing Christ life 
is the model for the entire pattern of creation of your life, of my life. He is the map for the whole journey of your life, should you be so interested as to have one. I do believe then in the physical resurrection of Jesus because that physical resurrection affirms what the whole physical and biological universe is saying and it grounds that truth in one personality. Yes, resurrection is spiritual as well, but resurrection must be physical and material to be Christian. If matter is inhabited by God, then matter is somehow eternal. And when the creed says we believe in the resurrection of the body, we believe that the body to be resurrected is ours as well as Christ. As in Him, so in us. As in us, so in Him. It is then the same Jesus crucified who was raised from the dead. I don't know that as any sort of parable or metaphor, but as the heart of our faith. The risen Lord had to be recognizably and undeniably Jesus of Nazareth, the man whom the disciples knew, who they saw get tired and worn out, whom they went to, to teach, whose miracles they knew and followed and saw and heard and with whom they ate and because of whom they are now cowed behind closed doors. For him to rise as anything other than Jesus of Nazareth that they knew would take any meaning resurrection away at all. If Jesus is only a spirit, empire wins. The disciples are right to be obeyed because empire will kill every loser it can find. If Jesus is only a spirit, they are without much hope. Any religion can say there'll be pie in the sky, by and by they die. Christianity claims that life here and now, life on this planet and life in this place matter. And the resurrection claims that systems seek to dominate and discriminate against us will fail in their plans because God will have it so. And we who have breathed in the Spirit of Christ, breathed out fear, and moved on to new living, will take up our crosses and serve the God of new life direction begins here and now as well as life to come. This new creation has got to be seen and experienced in the flesh and in the matter or we are simply offering a band-aid of there, there, it'll all be over soon to a world that is gushing its life out in chaos. Didn't you hope that this past week we would get through one seven-day period without one senseless, violent mass shooting? I did. We who are resurrected recognize that violence and claim that we will live our lives to bring it to an end and to bring new life into existence. The one the disciples had confessed as their risen Lord is the same. Jesus. And when he shows them his hands and his side, it's not some theatrical gesture, but it's the necessary showing of credentials. For the Jesus who stood before them as the risen Lord is also the crucified Jesus of Nazareth. He is, in a word, risen from the dead. Knowing that resurrection is physical as well as spiritual is the gift that Thomas gives us in his doubt. Thomas we can laugh at Thomas if we want to. The choir's already heard this, but I'm going to do it. Oh, that's all he does is doubt. Who's that knocking at the door? Could it be Thomas? <laughs> but Thomas acted no differently than any of the other disciples. The other disciples had the news from Mary, and they doubted. Thomas had the same reaction to the news. Now, I have no idea where Thomas was on either Day, out getting locks and bagels and a copy of the Jerusalem Post for all I know. He heard the news. He could have my sainted mother to say swelled up like 
bullfrog if he wanted his anger at being left out. But instead, breathe in, breathe out, on, he stayed with the church. He waited and Jesus returned. And Jesus gives Thomas the same gift that he offers the other disciples. He in peace. Three times in 12 verses, Jesus offers us peace. Three times in 12 verses, Jesus invites us to now faithful living. If depression is a result of focusing too much on the past, if anxiety is the result of focusing too much on the future, peace comes from focusing on the now. Now Jesus is alive. Now the world is created. Now possibilities are endless. Now the world learn a new way of living. Now we may all learn a new way of being. Now we may breathe in, breathe out, move on to the new life. The resurrection doesn't mean there won't be any more trouble. The Acts lesson that Ed read let us know clearly that trouble follows. Less than a year after the resurrection and the apostles are being arrested, that will continue. The empire will not give up until it so the apostles will be mocked, beaten, martyred. Francis and Claire are laughed at. John Huss will be mocked. John Wesley will be scorned. Dorothy Day will be imprisoned. Martin King and Oscar Romero will be murdered. It will come because of the resurrection. Because it does not come without dying to the past. And anew into the presence of God's new world. Yes, we will have glorified bodies when we are resurrected. And no, beloved, I haven't the foggiest idea what that's going to look like. But I know that we will recognize one to another because we will be seen for how we have lived in this life. And the wounds that you bear will bear witness to the grace of God as they are healed by Jesus who loves you and you are made and in your womb by the Spirit of Christ. If you can imagine that, then you can imagine resurrection living. If you can imagine a woman who from the time she was eight until the time she ran away from home at 16, a father who every night made her life a living hell. If you can imagine her engaged in self-destructive behavior with alcohol, with drugs. If you can imagine her Finding a church that doesn't their past isn't important because it is, but that it doesn't define you. If you can imagine a women's group that will take her in, provide her with comfort and support and love until she understands that her wounds can be healed, made whole, and she can be witness to new life, and her worth in being a child of God is made clear. Imagine resurrection. If you can imagine a young businessman happily married, three gorgeous daughters, the oldest of whom is seven. If you can imagine an addiction to pornography, thinking that there's no one until the day his oldest daughter walks into the room and he looks and realizes that those pictures on his computer screen are someone's daughter just like his son. And if you can imagine his tearful connection to his wife, being willing to seek a good therapist, a pastor who will be with him, a men's group that will forgive him, support him, but require some manner of restitution on him as he lives the new life, then I think you can imagine resurrection. Those are two examples of people that seen be born into the new if you can see them individuals, then can you see an entire church resurrected? A church that is proud and self-sufficient. A church that has done great things for the good of humanity. A church that has millions and millions of people strong throughout the world. A church that is rich in resources, packed with thoughtful, caring, intelligent, committed people. Here God invites us to work for more than charity, for justice, for a world that will embrace and support each individual. A church that recognizes its old wounds self-inflicted by its own racism and age. 
its gender and orientation bias not ignored, but transformed, repented of, and being the means by which we are made whole. If you can, then you can imagine resurrection and a body of Christ that will breathe in, breathe out, and move on to new living as a resurrected body, transforming the world one soul at a time to the glory of God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 312. One of our Stephen ministers will be down. There are matters of which you would have prayerful conversation to our Stephen minister. Those are all kept in deepest thoughts. If you would seek a further walk with Christ by joining this part of the body of Christ, I invite you to Tim or Aaron or me following our service. Let us stand and sing 312.